All right, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Structure Free Learning. And in this video, we're gonna do an example problem for the double integration method. So I'm just gonna get right to it. And I'm given the simply supported beam with a linearly distributed load for three meters and a uniformly distributed load for the second half of the beam, another three meters. The flexural rigidity, EI, is constant. And I want to find the equation for the slope and the elastic curve. And just as a reminder, here are the relationships that you need for the double integration method. So one integral from the curvature function will give you the slope. Integrating twice from the curvature function will give you the displacement. Now the first thing we're going to do is our statics. And, and when I say statics, I mean we're going to calculate the reactions and then determine the moment functions so that I can come up with curvature functions to integrate from. Let me get, give myself some credit for this thing. And here is my free body diagram. I've got a vertical reaction here. I'll call this AY horizontal AX and then a vertical reaction here I'll call this BY. And I'm going to apply the equilibrium equations to determine these reactions. So from some of the forces in the horizontal, I know that AX equals zero. Then I'm going to take moments about A, and when I do that, I'll get, which will tell me that BY is equal to 22 kilonewtons. And then I just sum forces in the vertical direction, and that'll let me find AY. And this will tell me that AY is 14 kilonewtons pointing upwards. All right, so hopefully getting these reactions were not that big of a deal for you. And what we're gonna do next is also still at the preliminary stages, but it's the first big part of using the double integration method. And that is coming up with these moment functions. And the way I like to do it is, I like to kind of redraw my free body diagram. I know the values here, this AY is 14 kilonewtons and BY is 22 kilonewtons on this side. And what I'd like to do is identify my discontinuities first. So those were concentrated forces, concentrated moments, beginnings and ends of distributed loads, and then determine how many cuts I need because those number of cuts are gonna to correspond to how many moment functions I need to describe the entire length of the beam. So let's go here, let's hear concentrated force and a beginning of a distributed load. I've got the end of the linearly distributed load and the beginning of the uniformly distributed load there. And then here I've got the end of the uniformly distributed load and a concentrated force of 22 kilonewtons. I have three discontinuities. I'm gonna make two cuts, one, two. So I'll call this cut one, I'll call this cut two. And for each cut, I want to define an origin. For cut one here, I'm going to say, I'm going to choose this discontinuity as my origin. I'm going to go this way. So I'll call that X1. And my local coordinate system for this, I'm going to say is a displacement upwards. It's a positive displacement. And I'm going X1 to the right. For the second cut, I'm going to go boom like this. I'll say here is my second vertical displacement function. And here, my coordinate system, my distance to that cut, I'll call this X2. Yes. All right, so now it's all about cutting and drawing free body diagrams. So I'm gonna go ahead and make cut one here. I'm gonna cut one, I'm gonna draw the internal loading and then apply equilibrium equations to get the internal loading functions. And so here is my drawing for cut one. And I have some internal loading here. I've got a shear, which I'll do capital V1 and my internal moment capital M1 like this and I have to, I'm just going to apply my moment equilibrium to get a moment function so I'm going to say sum of the moments about the cut equal to zero bam like that and I will get let's see M1 plus the linearly distributed load the area is one half W prime times x1 and then the resultant of this distributed load is right here, which is a distance of x1 over 3 from the cut face. So times the arm of x1 over 3 minus 14 kilonewtons times x1. And all this equal to 0. Now I need to define this location right here, this w prime, as a function of x1. And you know, I can't use 8. The most common mistake is to use 8 kilonewtons per meter, but that only applies at the end of the three meters right here for this segment from zero to three meters. And at three meters is eight kilonewtons per meter. So you could try to come up with an equation of the line. I like to use similar triangles. So if you notice like right here, this distance would be W prime also. And so 
So by similar triangles, I would have this ratio, W prime over X1 is eight kilonewtons per meter over three meters. And that would just tell me that W prime is equal to eight thirds kilonewtons per meter squared times X1. And when I substitute and plug and chug, I will get that M1 is equal to and this is my first moment function. All right, why don't you go ahead and try the second one, maybe pause it and try the second one on your own. All right, so now I'm gonna draw the free by diagram for cut two. I'm gonna take cut two and I'm gonna choose the right side of the drawing. And so my free by diagram will look like this. And my internal loading, an internal moment, I'll call that M2 and a shear V2. But I just need the moment function, so I'm just gonna take moments about the cut again, and I would get, and that's the force resultant times the arm, which is just X2 over two because I have a rectangle or a uniformly distributed load. And when I solve for the moment function, I get M2 is, and this is my second moment function. All right, what's up? And ooh, something to know is the range for these, you know, for X1. So if you look here, you know, something you always wanna to try to be able to identify is how, you know, what is the range for X1 to apply? And, and really, this cut is between these two discontinuities and X1 applies from here to here, between discontinuities. So here at this point, we defined X1 equals zero. And here at this discontinuity, X1 is equal to three meters. So our range for X1 would be x1 is greater than or equal to th zero, less than or equal to three meters. And then same thing here for x2. If you look at x2, we define zero at this end of the beam, and then at three meters away is the other discontinuity. So between discontinuities, that's also from zero to three meters. All right, so if you're able to calculate and determine the moment functions, then you're doing great. You've, you're at, we're at about half the problem here. And the next parts that we're gonna add beyond the statics are just doing the applying the antiderivative so we can relate the slope and displacement to the curvature. So here, the next thing to do is just to integrate. All right, so here are my moment functions here. I'm gonna take one antiderivative to get my kind of equation for the slope function. So I'm gonna set this EI times the slope function for the first region, if you will, or the first cut. And this is, and that would be my slope function. And then if I take one more antiderivative, that would give me my displacement or my equation for the elastic curve. And each time I do an antiderivative, I need a constant to pop out. And then I can go ahead and repeat the process for the second function. And it'll get me this, these following equations. And what you'll notice is that for each moment function, I get two constants. So here I have four constants that I need to solve for to actually complete this problem and get the slope function and the displacement function for this entire length of the beam. 